truth table is used to tabulate the output of a circuit for all the possible input combinations. Since each input has got two possible states, so we know this thing can be a zero or a one, for n inputs, it means there's two to the power n possible input combinations. So for the two input logic gates we've seen already, the two to the power two gives us the four possible input combinations. So we've seen zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So for three input circuits, we're going to have two to the power three to give us eight different possible input combinations, which are shown here. And then obviously for four inputs, we'll have two to the four gives us 16. So this truth table here is for three input uh, log, uh, combinational logic circuit. So we normally put the th um, first n columns as being the inputs. So we can see A to um, C are our inputs, and then Y is our output. So for this example, we would have some kind of combination of logic circuit, three inputs, A, B, and C, and a single output Y. So when we look at the truth table, you can see there's a pattern in the zeros and ones in the inputs. So if you look in this in this this C column, so we've got zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one. And then the next column across, which is B, we'll have two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. Then in A we've got four zeros and four ones. So we'll look later in the course uh, where this comes from. It just makes it easier when you draw on the uh, truth table, just draw it out using that pattern. It makes it very quick and easy. So if we look at this example circuit, so suppose we're given this combination of logic circuits here, we've got a NOT gate, an OR gate, an AND gate, and they've been combined together in these particular ways. You know, we can create a truth table from that circuit. <coughs> so we can just go through each possible input combination and see and work out what the output would be. So for the first line in the truth table, we know this is zero, zero and zero <clears throat> so if we put a zero into a not gate we know we're going to get a one here zero and zero on this or gate will give us a zero here and then with an and gate we have a one and a zero on the inputs so we're going to get a zero and eight put so we know then this is our eight put zero so you can do that you can just work through eight, in this case eight possible input combinations you can imagine that starts to be time consuming so we can actually start looking at some shortcuts. So we know with an AND gate, so we've got this AND gate on this last part of the circuit here. And we know that any time um, there's a zero on one of these inputs, so if this input is a zero or this one is a zero, we're going to get a zero on the output. So we know any time one of the inputs is a zero, we'll get a zero on the output. So we know when A is a one, this is going to give us a zero so we'll get a zero on the output. So just by looking for the cases where A is one, we, we know that the output is gonna be zero. And then the case when this input is a zero, is, you know, to get a zero on this input, both inputs on the OR gate will be zero. Because any time there's a one on the OR gate input, we're gonna get a one on the output. And the only time we get a zero is when both inputs are zero. So we know in that case, we'll get a zero on the output. And then we know that the remaining outputs there must be a one. So we can see for these cases, so every time we've got a one on the output, A is zero, so if a zero here, we're gonna end up with a one on the output. And at any time then, in that case where if B or C is a one, we'll get a one here. So any 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 time in these cases when B or C is a one, we get a one on the eight foot. So rather than going through each input combination individually, you can look for patterns and use these kind of shortcuts to fill out the truth table a bit 